Today, I want to share with you guys the toothpaste that I use. I'm a pediatric dentist and I have had early signs of cavities postpartum due to just acid reflux and things like that, frequently snacking, sipping on coffee. So I have certain toothpastes I use for certain reasons and I'm gonna go through the main four. Now the toothpaste I talk about, I am not using each one of these every single day. I kind of rotate them through. There is one that I do make sure I use every night before bed and that is my prescription toothpaste. But everything else, I'm kind of switching it out and depending on the day or what I think I need, I'll use one or the other. So the first one, I really like people to know that you can use kid toothpaste as an adult. This is Tanner's Tasty Paste. The vanilla bling flavor literally tastes like cake icing. Tastes amazing. So this was great during pregnancy when I was nauseous, I felt sick, didn't feel like brushing my teeth. This can be a really nice thing just to motivate you to brush if you're not feeling like brushing. And it has 1100 parts per million of fluoride, the same amount that is in adult toothpaste. And it doesn't have SLS, a foaming ingredient that sometimes makes people more prone to getting mouth ulcers or having like a burning sensation. So if you're a grown up and you don't like brushing your teeth, get a kid's toothpaste that's fluoridated and you can use that too. You can see this one's almost gone. This is a prescription toothpaste. So you've got to get this from your dentist. It's 5,000 parts per million of fluoride prevalent. ClinPro um, is another one, but this is great if you're high risk for forming cavities, which I am. I sip coffee all day long. I drink water afterward, but if you're high risk for developing cavities, you want to have a prescription toothpaste in your arsenal. If any of this is helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, okay? So this toothpaste is called Carry Free. I like it too because it's not just in mint. It also comes in a citrus and a grape flavor, but this is the only brand I like that has nanohydroxyapatite. I'm not using the other ones that are from lesser known companies that haven't been around a while. This has been around since 2004. It was founded by a dentist, Carry Free, the company. They use patented nanohydroxyapatite technology. I think their sourcing is good. They've got good quality control and a great history in the oral care market. So highly recommend Carry Free. Nanohydroxyapatite is wonderful if you've got tooth sensitivity. Because that nanohydroxyapatite is smaller than the regular hydroxyapatite in your tooth, it is able to penetrate more deeply and can help alleviate sensitivity if you have it. It helped me with remineralizing early cavities that I had postpartum. Again, my coffee habit. This helps if my teeth start to get sensitive, I'm reaching for this bad boy. After whitening, this is great too. So carry free a nanohydroxyapatite and fluoride toothpaste in combination is lovely. And just as an aside, I do not yet recommend nanohydroxyapatite for kids. It's not that I think carry free is not safe, but there are so many other brands out there that I worry that if I'm like, yeah, nanohydroxyapatite for kids, there is bad sourcing. There are not great types of nanohydroxyapatite. It's a nanoparticle. It's really reactive. It can be absorbed more easily in your body and go weird places. And so I'm just not comfortable yet saying, yes, try it out for kids. Can you experiment on yourself a little bit? Sure. Because even the ADA, they don't recommend nanohydroxyapatite for people, but sometimes they're a few years behind, right? What is actually going to be something useful. We need clinical studies to know for sure. We have some studies showing it helps with sensitivity. That's why I like it, but it is not a substitute for fluoride. That's why I like carry free. It has both fluoride and nanohydroxyapatite because they work in different ways. Fluoride is creating an acid resistant layer outside of your tooth. That's going to prevent future breakdown. Nanohydroxyapatite is working to remineralize current areas that are weakened in your teeth and make them stronger and less sensitive. So they do different things. They work great in conjunction. And the last toothpaste I like is called Tartar End. This is another one that is not like an ADA approved toothpaste. It does not have fluoride. So I use it with one of my other ones that also contains fluoride. But what it helps do, it breaks down bonds between tartar and your tooth and between tartar and itself. So I love this if I'm starting to get buildup on my bonded orthodontic retainer. Over time using this consistently, you'll notice pieces of that tartar start to break off. So it is really cool new technology. I've actually emailed a lot with the creator. He's a chemist and it's just really, really neat toothpaste. There aren't any studies yet on it that I know, but if you struggle a lot with tartar buildup, you want to go to the dentist. The hygienist has to scale it off to remove the biggest pieces, but to stop big buildup, this could be a really cool toothpaste for you to try. It's called Tartar End. And that's my toothpaste regimen. One of the big key takeaways from using a toothpaste is to not rinse with water afterward. You want to brush your teeth two minutes and then spit. You can floss before or after, doesn't matter, but the main thing is to not rinse your mouth out after with water because that's going to dilute the effect of the nanohydroxyapatite of the tartar end molecule that they use of the fluoride. It's not going to be able to stick around in your teeth and work. You want a thin film of that toothpaste to remain. If you need to rinse with something and you've used fluoride toothpaste, you can rinse with fluoride mouthwash if you need to, but ideally, so any of the others, tartar end, nanohydroxyapatite, the appetite, you're going to wash it away if you rinse with something. So you want to just spit out the excess and then kind of let it be. If you need to rinse, some people are like, but I feel so gross. So brush, swish out, spit so you could brush and then rinse with whatever and spit, get out all the big pieces if there's lots of gunk that you really need to spit and then just put a thin layer of toothpaste on with your toothbrush again and then spit and go. All right. Thanks guys. What else would you like to know? Let me know in the comments.